Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, and today we're going to be cooking a recipe for Pakistani street food style chicken karahi. Oh. And this is one of my favorite moves. Chili powder, and a bit of black pepper. I'm just going to add in a slice. Everyone, welcome to Street Food at Home. We love to travel, but we can't always travel, so I'm taking you to the street food cart at home, the street food kitchen, and we are gonna cook some of my favorite street food recipes. Today is Pakistani style chicken karahi. To me, if there's one single dish that really represents Pakistani food and culture, it's a karahi. And not only because it's so delicious, but it's the dish that people gather together for, and that's what makes it so special. Just come around here real fast. I had to bust out the Pakistani pesha. These are actually peshawari chapals for the occasion the greatest sandals. So I'll be cooking today in the greatest footwear possible. Straight from Peshawar. Probably one of my top food memories in Pakistan is the karahi of many different types. And just hearing when you, when you go to a restaurant, walking down the street, you hear the like clanking of the plan. You hear the, the moving, they just like, they roar the fire, they clank the pans, the karahi, and you can just smell the aroma of the spices. A karahi is actually the name for the pot, which is similar to a wok, but it's a rounded pot with curved high edges, typically made from steel or iron. It's perfect for making curries, stews, and you can fry just about anything in it. With the curved edges, you are able to really stir and mix your ingredients so effectively, and I love that clanking on the metal. So we've got the chicken here. A whole chicken. Best to use the whole chicken so you have different pieces. Um, but I can remember my first, I think our first karahi was in Lahore on our first day of visiting Pakistan. And we went to a place called Butt Karahi, which is legendary throughout Pakistan for their karahis, both chicken and mutton. And I actually had to choose, you get to choose your own chicken, live chicken. They're giving me the honor of choosing the chicken, so I have the pressure. I have no idea how to choose a good chicken. <laughs> Which one do you think? Black one? Beautiful, very, very nice. Okay, I'll choose this chicken. One of the interesting things is that they peel, they take off the skin. So I think that there's enough oil, there's enough richness in the curry when you cook it and the the butter that they use that they don't want the extra skin i think i need my mother-in-law to come help me chop up this chicken she's so much better than i am in lahore they just kind of like yanked off the skin it was pretty cool okay that works <laughs> Oh, nice. Dude, she knows exactly where those joints are and everything. <laughs> In Pakistan, they had this really unique way of chopping meat using this knife which you hold between your toes. And then just kind of like slice to you. You could also buy chicken that's already chopped up, but I think a whole chicken is the best because you have all the different parts. Chicken's ready, skinless, keep the bones in. Here, let's get the ginger garlic ready. And what struck me actually in, in Pakistan is the use of ginger. Um, I loved the ginger. You can kind of scrape it up. Yeah. I think you want to take off the skin mainly because it's kind of bitter. Clothes just fall out. Okay, I think that's probably good. We drop this into the mortar and pestle. Bring this up here, and we're just gonna smash this into a ginger garlic paste. I think we can start frying now. Let's fire up the, the karahi. You wanna crank up the fire pretty high. 
I'm gonna first add in some oil. They added in quite a lot more than that, but I think that will do. Drop in that chicken, be careful. Oh, I forgot to even chop up those breasts though. Hold on, I made a mistake. I'm just gonna really quickly, I totally forgot to just chop up those chicken breasts. Whoops. My bad. Okay, go in. I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt. And again, there's so many different processes different ways to do this. Uh, I know at the legendary Butt Karahi, they uh, pressure cook the chicken with some tomatoes um, and then fry it like this. But we're gonna do this method where we kind of just fry off the chicken, almost like a, a shallow fry, and then we'll add in all of the spices and the tomatoes. Also, another thing is typically the, the Karahis, they don't have a handle. So they use like a, almost like a pliers to turn the pan as they t rotate it, as they stir. And as they just clank, you can hear the clanking of the pans of the karahis. You mostly want to just brown the chicken. I think that's okay for now. We're going to drop in the ginger garlic and the tomatoes. Ginger garlic, all of it. And tomatoes are going to go in. I think maybe four, four tomatoes should be good. And I just like to put them in there whole. Maybe five. Immediately you can smell that ginger garlic starting to caramelize. And we threw in those tomatoes whole because they're gonna, that's gonna make the sauce. That's gonna make a lot of the sauce. Um, and I think at this point, if you don't have enough oil, oftentimes they were really oily in Pakistan, uh, but which is extremely good, but I think you can add water. Other people did it, yeah, with water, some water in there as well. Okay, and now we can really crank up the fire do it real karahi style. I'm gonna turn up the fire. At this point, we let it boil for a while, let that chicken cook, and you want those tomatoes to cook until they're really soft and just dissolve into the sauce. And in Pakistan, they just had like, at the, at the real karahi restaurants, they just had lines. The chefs are so talented, so multitasking. They know all the ingredients for each karahi. But they have every step down. They can't make a mistake, and so they add different spices, that different burner along the way down until we finally finish. And then just they just go like go down the line, like just stirring them when they need to be stirred, jumping from karahi to karahi. That like multitasking karahi skill is incredible. It's so much fun. A really hot strong fire really helps in this time and in Pakistan they cook it on such a high fire like the flames just rise past the edges of the karahi you can see those tomatoes cooking oh yeah this is just bringing back the memories already of Pakistan the clanking of the karahi just the steam and spices just flowing in the air at this point the tomatoes should be like starting to dissolve and what you want to do is you want to take off that oh yeah that's pretty hot you want to take off the tomato skin Okay, this is better. You wanna pull off that tomato skin. Get it all there? Tomato skin, take off the tomato skin. This one has already just disintegrated and fully fallen apart. Grab that. And then once you have all of that tomato skin off, you then take your spatula and just mash up. Mash up those tomatoes. Into a Perfect harmony tomato sauce. So I add in a little bit more water and now I'm just gonna let that simmer again a little bit more, let those tomatoes fully dissolve. Thinking back, reflecting back on all the different karahis we ate, I think almost all the time we ate them with tandoori roti in Pakistan, which is where they they uh, flap out the, they slap out the dough and then into the tandoor um, and then it cooks on the, the side of that oven. But we don't have a tandoor, so we're gonna make a more of a simple at home style roti. And all it is is flour and water. I'm gonna add in the water. And you wanna add only half of it first, I believe. And then you just gotta 
kind of massage it in. I'm definitely not an expert at making roti. I've only done it a few times in my life. But this is a really simple way to make it at home and all it is is flour and water. You get kind of like clumplets and then you can add in a little more water, I believe. A little bit at a time. Need this just for a few minutes. You gotta let it rest for about 15 minutes to let that come together before you then make roti. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's put this in the fridge for about 15 minutes. And back to the karahi. Oh yeah, this is looking delicious. Sauces are coming together, the oils, the juices, the tomatoes have disintegrated. Um, I think time to add all the spices. Something I loved about Pakistan is that they don't, there's no measurements. Uh, they just like scoop in the spices and just toss them in. They know from experience and from doing it so many times. For those of us who are less experienced, who don't really know how much to add, it's about taste testing. It's about, because there's really no right or wrong exact amount. It's about your taste preference. It's about the combinations. We need, I need to have a general idea of the, the combinations and the different spices to use. Start with cumin. Cumin goes in, coriander powder, chili powder, and I wouldn't say like they were usually very spicy, but some of them were spicier than others, so it's kind of like preference. And sorry, just to clarify, I mean spicy as in chili spicy, but spicy, full of spices, just packed with spices. Okay, next up, a touch of garam masala and a bit of black pepper, and I'll add in just a touch of turmeric. And let's get that stirred up. Oh, that aroma, the spice, and the color immediately changes. When they were adding in the spice though at the, at the restaurants in Pakistan, man, they just flew, they just chucked in the spices. I was a little, not quite as fast. All oh, that aroma. Okay, when we're gonna add in a few more, we're gonna add in some fenugreek leaves and then the green chilies. Pull off the stem. These will add some good heat to it too. And then I think we'll just quickly slice them in half. Chilies go in. And then I'm just gonna toss on uh, a bit of fenugreek leaves. <laughs> Quickly taste test. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I think it needs more salt though. I almost forgot one more key ingredient really quickly and not everywhere added this, but yeah, to get that like extra richness, this is the ultimate preferred richness factor, butter. Probably just a, that should be good. I'm just gonna add in a slice, but in some of the, the restaurants in Pakistan, they added in like a block of butter. Let that melt into the sauce. Oh, oh that's gonna be so good. Most of the time when we had karahi, they simmered it all, most of the liquid out so it was like a thick and rich, like sauce rather than watery. So we're gonna simmer that out on a very low heat. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna just prepare a few more ingredients to toss on top. Ginger and coriander, fresh coriander. What we are looking for this time is julians. So we're gonna peel it, peel the skin. Very, very thin julians. So I'm gonna cut it, chop it very thin. For the coriander, just run our knife through this. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I think we're just about ready. A few more green chilies just on top, just for garnish, just to let them wilt, and we are almost ready to go. Chop them in half again. Ginger. And finally the fresh coriander. 
or you could give it just one quick, like mostly like a fold into it. I want to just fold into it. Okay, perfect. I think we're ready. <laughs> okay. Okay, turn off the fire. I think we're ready. Uh, one more thing I wanted to add is that in some places they added a lot of cream to the karahi, uh, but some places didn't. So I think it's your preference, but I chose not to add cream because the cream sort of mellows out the spice, the stronger spice flavors. So I really like it with the stronger spice layers. So it's really up to you. You can add some cream to this as well. It's roti time. I'm just gonna quickly knead that dough one more time. I really hope the roti comes out. Oh yeah, it feels quite good. It feels smooth. And then we're gonna grab a, a ball of the dough. Make it do a circle. Take a little flour. And then we can roll it out. <laughs> uh -oh. oh man, my roti is definitely not going to be perfect. The amazing aunties of Pakistan and the, all the chefs at the restaurants. Man, they were so expert. On a low. <laughs> that my favorite guy was in Lahore. Literally in like milliseconds, he pounded out the roti, the skill. The skill was unbelievable. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna mess around anymore. To the pan. Okay, let's make another one. Oh man, at this stage, I just wanna get these rotis done as fast as possible because that curry, that karahi is ready. I almost can't handle myself. So they might be a little bit rushed, these rotis. Or well, maybe flip it. Oh, it looks okay. I think it's, I think it's ready. Okay, perfect. So much respect to all of the chefs, all of the home cooks, all of the street food cooks. The way, the knowledge and the experience that they have and just their methods and just their effectiveness and they're like multitasking is commendable. Ooh, that's hot. Oh, I think I burnt it a little bit. It's a little bit burnt, but I think it's okay. Oh, we got the puffiness, yes. Look at that bubble. It's ready, right? I think it's ready when it starts puffing up like that. Ooh, ooh that's hot. <laughs> oh, that's hot. I'm gonna make just one more and then we're gonna, I can't wait any longer. Are you the first customer today? <laughs> Here, my guy. Try the, try the roti. Ooh, it's hot. Mate, try this one. And the idea, when you're in Pakistan, like the, the rotis, as soon as they're ready, they come to your table, you always have to eat fresh, hot roti, like literally out of the tandoor, onto your plate, and you immediately like scoop into the, to the karahi. So I'm gonna do my best here. I'm gonna cook this last one, and then we're gonna run over to the table to take our first bite. Moments from our first bite here. <laughs> Perfect. Onto the plate, okay, and immediately gonna grab the karahi onto the table, right onto that wok stand so it doesn't fall. Tear off some roti. You can see it's kind of like dried up, the sauce is kind of dried up, and that's typically how it was served in Pakistan because you want that like sauce to enrich and to thicken to make it like luscious, but at the bottom you can see there's gonna be some juice and sauce and all that ginger. And one more thing is that in Pakistan, really the main way to eat it is communally. All you and your friends, you gather around the karahi, you scoop into the central karahi. It's sharing, it's community, it's just, it represents the hospitality, the love, the food of Pakistan so well. And that's one of the reasons why I love uh, karahi so much. And big shout out to Ali 
We enjoyed many, many karahis together. Okay, let's dig in. I'm going for that drumstick. Grab a, a chunk off. Oh, and at, at this point, the, the meat should just kind of come off the bone. Oh, it's still blazing hot. You can smell the butter in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna scoop in for some of those green chilies. Mm. Oh, wow. That's pretty awesomely good. The richness of that butter, all oh, that blend of spices, and then the chicken just like falls off the bone, just melts in your mouth. The ginger comes in so nicely, and I didn't expect that before going to Pakistan. Oh, that's a bite. Oh, it's steaming hot, too. One of the great dishes of the world, without a doubt. At some of the most popular karahi restaurants, there would just be this massive dining area, a sea of people, friends and families, all coming together, sharing a karahi. It's much better to eat a karahi with friends. And my buddy What's Dwight. What's up, guys? Hey there. Ready Curry to just enjoy this. It smells amazing. Oh, nice and hot. And I see those chilies in there looking pretty green and fresh. Let's dig in, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy Dwight from Courageous Kitchen. Way better enjoyed with friends. So I want to dig right into the kind of saucy bit. Yeah. All right. Give me those chilies. Okay. There we go. Ooh, fingers burning. Chilies first. You can taste all the spices you put on there. Dude, we're gonna be licking our fingers. <laughs> this is so good. Once you finish your meal, and if you look around, almost everybody, well, there's like people in, uh, across the playing field that are in the position, but once you finish with your meal, it's, I wouldn't say it's mandatory, but yes, it is mandatory to get into the position where you elbow down on the pillow. And this is my first time in the position in the right clothes, in the right attire. This is one of the most comfortable, like, positions after you eat that you will ever have in your life. My, my good friend Ali knows that very well. That's my signature position. That's my default position. Right after having fallen position. Yeah. I don't even have to make an effort. I actually automatically go into this position. Yeah, I saw him just kind of slide into that position after he took his last bite. That wraps up this Pakistani street food chicken karahi recipe. I'll have the ingredients in the description box below that you can check out. I didn't even know what I was fully doing every step, but I think it turned out really tasty. It turned out really good. And so I'd encourage you to make it yourself if you have a chance. And I would love to see your photos and hear about your experience in the comments or why don't we hashtag street food at home and I'd love to see your photos. And I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Stay tuned, there's gonna be more street food at home and remember to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below and if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe and also click the little bell icon that way you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching, see you on the next video.